This is Radar for On the Radar Entertainment Blog with another weekly baseball observation. It's the final weekend of baseball. It's also the end of the regular season. The Nationals continue this weekend to bat Adam Eaton second despite his best value being a leadoff hitter. The Indians continue to bat Lindor leadoff despite his best value being the middle of the order. They only once this weekend batted him second, which is amazing. One time all season. Jake Bowers played left field again. He's not a left fielder. And their backup infielder Velasquez played the outfield. He's not an outfielder. The Pirates have playing Kramer, Gonzalez, and Elmore in the outfield when they're not outfielders because supposedly Starling Marte and Brian Reynolds can't play the rest of the year and they can't play Milky Cabrera in the outfield, I guess. The Reds continue to play Jose Peraza and O'Grady in the outfield despite one being a shortstop who got to play shortstop this weekend, but O'Grady's a first baseman. And Kyle Farmer seems to always got to play second base when he's the catcher by trade. The Red Sox continue to play Sam Travis in left field this weekend despite Brock Holt starting at first base to swap them. And Andrew Kastrick pitching out of the bullpen despite the Red Sox needing three, needing sorry pitching with three of their guys out. The Braves a couple times this weekend played Marquez in left field despite him being a better right fielder than Duvall or Matt Joyce. The Yankees continue back DJ Lemayo off this DJ Lemayo lead off this weekend, swapping in Judge or Stanton second, and then Maven did start in right field this week instead of center field. But if you start Judge and Stanton in the corner spots, it's obviously going to be Gardner starting, so there's no Maven to start. The Rockies continue to play Garrett Hampson in center field despite having. Three guys who can do that on their roster. The Brewers have a lot of starters in their bullpen. And it was September and all the four-man rosters and stuff, so that's why they're doing it, but it's silly. And then Grandal batting second when he's best offensive catcher in the National League. He should be in the middle of the lineup. Cubs are playing Tony Kemp in right field when his best value is center field or left field. And then instead of playing Schwerber or even playing Castellanos at first base or Zobris or Bodie, they're playing Caratini, the backup at first base. Then Hansel Robel and Nico Horner, those middle infield prospects they called up this year, played in center field or right field or left field this year. And then Bodie and Zobers in today's game played shortstop. Weird. So Larry Bat is second when he's a middle of the order guy with all those home runs. And then McBroom played right field. This middle infield prospect played center field once or twice. And then in today's game, Dozier and O'Hearn spend time in the outfield and right field respectively. Really bad idea. Twins one time this weekend had Miguel Sano leading off. Really dumb. The Diamondbacks continue to play a third base from Rojas in left field when they could just play LaCostero and Gerard Dyson and Adam Jones the rest of the, the, the whole weekend. The Angels play Theus, a first baseman, a third base. They play Coward, a third baseman, a second base, and they then play Ward, a third baseman, in left field. And get Trevor Cale Mejia continues pitching the bullpen the second half of the season despite them needing starting pitcher. The Mariners, if they're not going to play Shed Long, they'll play Lopes or Dylan Moore in center field, not playing infields in the outfield. Despite Laser Laredano being back, Marcana continues to play center field. And at the same time, he's playing right field. And then they'll put Chad Pinder in center field or even left field or even right field. Play the first baseman, Brown in left field. It's too many guys in the outfield who are not outfielders. Brandon Belt batting second when he should be batting in the middle of the lineup for the Giants. Dider still are batting no matter if it's Freeze, Muncy, or Jack Peterson, whomever. Let's bat him one and two. Let's play Bellinger in center, Pollock in left when they're not in the right position, Bellinger is better off at first base. Pollock's better off in center field. And Beattie playing third base and left field when he's a first baseman. Tigers this weekend play Candelario at first base with Miguel, with Miguel Cabrera not being able to play first base all year when he's a third baseman. The Orioles couldn't go even three days without having to play Trey Mancini out of position. There was a lot of right field this year when he should have been first base, DH, or left field. They played him a couple games in left field. And then the Rays, despite... Glasnow and Stell working their way back and other injuries. They didn't even start Jalen Beeks. He pitched out of the bullpen this weekend. The Phillies use Brad Miller, Phil Gosselin, or Sean Rodriguez in left field or, or shortstop. That's infielders in left field, and Miller's the only one who is a natural-born shortstop to begin with. The Marlins are using Bertie Rojas as shortstop for center field and Castro at third base. Dean at first base, Brinson right field, they're playing everybody out of position. And the Astros this weekend with Correa out for the rest of the year until the playoffs start, maybe. Bregman was playing shortstop some games, and Lesmus Diaz was playing third base, when the whole point of Diaz is he can play shortstop. And then, with the season over this weekend, I got to give you guys my predictions. Now, I wrote all of them on Facebook. Check out on the Radar Entertainment blog, which will have a note on the section about who I predicted to win each ward this year. Now, just a brief recap of that thing is the surprises that you'll get is I have DJ LeMay winning the MVP because if it weren't for him, the Yankees wouldn't be where they were, driving in 100 runs at a leadoff spot, playing goal glove defense at every position he played. 
Mike Trout got hurt, so he's not going to win it. And Alex Bregman is on a, is on a team that's too stacked. Cody Bellinger's going to win it because Christian Yellow's injured, and his stats are also better than Anthony Rendon. Garrett Cole had a better season than teammate Verlander. And there's only one other guy you can say. Giolito had a good enough year. There's no starting pitchers outside the two Astros teammates. The Dodgers, the Dodgers Ryu pitched well, and so did Strasburg and his teammate Patrick Corbin. DeGrom pitched way better than all of them. So that's the end of Rookies of the Year. I'm going Eloy based on he has more home runs RBI than Jordan Alvarez. He plays the position. He played more games. You know, it's not the MVP, but he doesn't have as much support as the Astros do. Lau, if he didn't get hurt, Brandon, he would have been the Rookie of the Year. Trinidad Tatis and Robles are going to finish second place. Pete Alonso broke the record for most home runs of rookie season at 53. Rocco Baldelli took the Twins to the playoffs. That's impressive. Won 100 games. Kevin Cash took the Rays again. Bob Melvin took them again. Mike Schilt took the Cardinals to the division after most people thought they would finish in third place this year. And Martinez turned it around in Washington and Troy Lavalu finished in second place. Both of those are pretty well. It's explanatory. Brian Cashman is the GM of the year. Mike Rizzo is the GM of the year based on the moves they both made. Thad Levine and Eric Nader from the Twins and Rays, respectively. Mike Gersh and Alex Anthopoulos. They come up again. And comeback player of the year, I think, is Lucas Giolito because he had the worst ERA last year. It was really bad this year, and he pitched like an all-star. This year, Miguel Sano pitched, played well after being injured for most of the year. Domingo Santana, after having a bad year in Milwaukee, had a pretty good year in Seattle. Donaldson being healthy and having a good year in Atlanta, Adam Eden having a healthy year in Washington, and Corey Seager having health, mostly healthy year in L.A. And then Chapman and Kirby Yates are the relievers of the year. Roberto Zuna, Brad Hand, Josh Hader, Will Smith could also win it. Gold Gloves. Just briefly, Chris Vasquez, Roberto Perez could go either way, a catcher with, and McCann. There's no question that Matt Olson and Matt Chapman of the A's win their gloves, but Smoke and Moreland could be nominated. And then defensively third base, there aren't that many good defensive third basemen. This year, so Moncada and Dozier actually have the best fielding percentages after them. Lindor is clearly the best defensive shortstop. Elvis Andrus and Willie Adamas both had good years defensively. Yolmer Sanchez San- of the White Sox, best defensive year as a second baseman. His competition is a guy who splits his time between multiple positions in VR and Jerkson Profar. And in the outfield, Tommy Pham had a better year defensively than Alex Gordon and Andrew Benatini. Mike Trout, despite being injured, is... The best friend of the field of baseball this year started Jackie Bradley Jr. Kevin Kiermeyer. It's Mike Trout. Mookie Best, despite a down year def- offensively, still was the best defensive right fielder. They started Nomar Mazzara, Cole Calhoun, who could both be nominated. And Verlander, Eduardo Rodriguez, and Mike Minor have the best fielding percentage with the most amount of chances and opportunities thrown at them. And surprisingly, Ismani Grandal and Paul DeYoung are, have the best defensive ratings as a catcher and shortstop in baseball. And they're really good offensively. Regulars like Molina could could win it. JT Ruben Muto had a good year. And then Trevor Story, also known for his offense, had a good defensive year. And Jose Iglesias, who was the guy who everybody thought of was this year, could also win it. And then the bra- the first baseman in the National League is the most one of the most difficult positions. Because Freddie Freeman, Paul Goldschmidt, and Anthony Rizzo all are very close on that. Nolan Arenado, obviously, is the best defensive third baseman in the National League. It's the interesting thing to see Eduardo Escobar and Justin Turner being right behind him defensively, but there's a huge gap. And then the best defensive left fielder, I was surprised this year. It's been Juan Soto, David Peralta, and Curtis Granderson, who played the majority of the season this year for the Marlins. And then Lorenzo Cain and Pilar, it's, there, it's between the two of them. Who's going to win the gold glove? Who's going to lose it? Victor Robles plays a great center field, so he could be up there. And then in right field, the issue is Cody Bellinger has split a lot of time in center field, left field, and first base. And Bryce Harper also improved his defense this year. But Michael Conforto had the best year defensively out of guys playing mostly right field this year. And the starting pitchers, Mike Mikolas, Patrick Corbin, Jack Flaherty, both really good. Silver Sluggers is all based on just the stats. Sanchez is clearly the best offensive catcher in the American League. Mitch Garber had a great year. Roberto Perez had a pretty good year. The DHY Soler just crushed it, despite Nelson Cruz and J.D. Martinez. So with Nelson Cruz and J.D. Martinez, they had great years at DH. Now Jose Abreu had the best year offensively at first base in the American League. And last year, he won it despite not having the best year. This year, he may not win it because Carlos Santana and Matt Olson had good years. Then DJ LeMayu, who can win the MVP, is definitely the best defensive second baseman in the game. But because he didn't play that many innings there, he's the best offensive second baseman this year. Out doing Altuve, who missed time, and Rudan Odor with 30 home runs. And the shortstop, Bogarts was the best offensive shortstop this year. Glaber Torres, who split time between second and short, had a great year. Marcus Simeon had a good offensive year, like always. 
Bregman had a great offensive year, so did Matt Chapman and Rafael Devers. So it's really going to be Bregman or Devers, really the winners. Eddie Rosario, who got screwed last year out of left field, Silver Slugger, because they gave him to J.D. Martinez because for because they gave him to two positions. How can you give him at two positions when he's really a DH? He's going to win it. But Eloy and Michael Brantley had good offensive years out of left field. And Mike Trout, again, he may not win the MVP this year, but he can win the Gold Glove and the Silver Slugger in his position because Springer also missed a lot of time. And Brett Gardner played left field and center field this year. Max Kepler this year was the best offensive right fielder. Sorry, Mookie Betts. Cole Calhoun had a great rebound year offensively. And Trey Mancini, because he played all those dumb games in right field this year, that's where he qualifies the most. And the National League Silver Slugger, last but not least, Grandal, who we were surprised defensively, best offensive catcher this year in the National League, with JT Muto and Wilson Contreras not far behind. Josh Bell got off to a great start. But it's really going to be Pete Alonso with the home runs he hit this year, even though Freddie Freeman's all around good. Cattell Marte split time between center field and second base, but he's clearly the best offensive second baseman in baseball in the National League. Why? Ozzy Albies and Ryan McMahon had good seasons. Trevor Story, clearly the best offensive shortstop. Javi Baez and Paul DeYoung had good years. So if, let's say DeYoung wins the sil- gold glove, then they can give the silver slugger to Trevor Story. Suarez, because of the whole amount of home runs he had and all the other stats, no one there might be an all-round player, but Suarez could steal the silver slugger. Or Josh Donaldson, who could be comeback player of the year, could steal it from him. Juan Soto, we were surprised about it being the best offensive left fielder. Well, he's the best offensive left fielder this year. Kyle Schwerber and Marcel Azuna had good years, but not as good as Soto. And Ronald Acuna has split time between all three outfield positions, but because he spent the most time in center field, he's going to win the center field silver slugger. And Starling Marte is a runner-up. And Kevin Pillar, because there aren't that many guys who play center field this year, were good offensively. Pillar had a good enough season. Now, Yelich, uh, it be controversial I think Yelich should win the silver slugger in right field because his numbers are clearly great. Bellinger is very close, but Bellinger's numbers are split between three different positions, which is why Bellinger should not win the gold glove in right field, even though he's got all the outfield assists, nor the silver slugger, because he didn't play that many games. He could be, still be the most valuable player at, a, at three or four positions. And Bryce Harper had a good offensive year as well. Pitching-wise, Stephen Brault, Brandon Woodruff, and Stephen Matz had the better offensive stats out of all the pitchers. Those were the final weekend baseball observations and the award predictions. For more for more of my work, go to on the Red Entertainment blog at Facebook.com to see my the the all my baseball notes and football notes.